Ernst. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you here today. Uh, Mr. Eibach, it was wonderful visiting with you. Very much. And Mr. Northy, it has been wonderful to see you as well. Um, I just want to make my commendations for Mr. Northy to the committee. Um, I, it's a pleasure to know you as a, a colleague back in the state of Iowa working uh, with the Department of Agriculture in your capacity there, but also as a friend too. Thank you so much. You and your wife, Cindy, are, are wonderful farmers, uh, conservationists, and stewards of our land. And we thank you for your years and years of service to the great state of Iowa. Um, since its inception, Mr. Northy, since its inception in 2013, you have been a stalwart leader and a champion of the Iowa Nutrient uh, reduction strategy. And we've seen the positive impact of this relatively young program already, and we know that continuing our efforts to promote voluntary incentive-based conservation are going to yield results in soil health and water quality. And if you could just give us an overview uh, on how has your work in implementing this program prepared you for taking on the reins at the NR, uh, NRCS? Uh, thank you, Senator. Um, it, it certainly has been a, a big part of uh, our work at the Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship the, uh, uh, the last five or seven years. Um, prior to that, we have always been very active in the soil conservation effort, but uh, as we saw some issues developing, whether it's Chesapeake Bay, whether it's challenges in the Great Lakes, uh, certainly the hypoxic zone in the Gulf of Mexico, and then water quality issues within Iowa as well, we decided we needed to be able to be more proactive looking at water quality issues. And this is reducing nitrate and phosphorus uh, in our rivers, lakes, or streams. Certainly the loss from our farms, but also our urban areas. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I serve on the hypoxia task force, which is a dozen states uh, up and down the Mississippi River. It's five federal agencies as well that are part of that. We meet to coordinate conversations about what we're each doing in our states. And one of the things we agreed to do was put together a nutrient reduction strategy within each state. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the early ones to put that strategy together. Ours is built on mm -hmm. a non-regulatory, proactive conservation water quality effort. Mm -hmm. uh, so since that time, uh, the state of Iowa has, has caught the vision as well. And now this year is up to $10.5 million direct investment in our water quality initiative in Iowa, mm -hmm. which has allowed us to partner with farmers uh, to, to grow cover crops. We have... At, at the time the, uh, the nutrient reduction strategy was begun, uh, we had less than 100,000 acres of cover crops in the state of Iowa. This last year, we were over 600,000 acres. Uh, one of our cost share programs this year is to offer 50% mm -hmm. cost share to, uh, to farmers that are interested in adding cover crops. And we had 1,000 farmers sign up uh, for their first year of trying cover crops on their farms. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also had added nutrient reduction wetlands. We have 80 of those now. We have bioreactors and saturated buffers. And so the momentum is really growing. We have a long ways to go, absolutely. We have lots more that needs to get done. But what I'm excited about is the momentum, uh, both in the interest of farmers and in bringing lots of outside groups, mm -hmm. leveraging those state dollars, partnering with our federal partners, and bringing in lots of other organizations. So to me, that's been one of my pride and joys to be a part of. It certainly has taught me the value of working uh, across borders. We took farmers down to Mississippi to see what farmers were doing there. Um, we've been very engaged in different ways, and I look forward to taking that experience to, uh, to NRCS, if confirmed. Fantastic. And, and I have had the opportunity to uh, go out on watershed tours with you as, as well, uh, Mr. Northy. And so uh, we have seen what uh, IDOLS, the Iowa Department of um, Agriculture and Land Stewardship, and uh, what the NRCS, our local farmers, our communities have been able to do through a number of those projects that you've just described. Um, but what role has the RCPP, the Regional Conservation Partnership Program, played in some of those water quality initiatives as well? 
It has been very important. Uh, so the, the RCPP really helps organize folks, bring some federal dollars into partnerships. It creates partnerships mm -hmm. because we will get together and to have a good, effective application, you need many partners, some matching dollars. Uh, we have several RCPPs, including uh, our last largest RCPP is nine and a half million dollars of, of federal dollars along with over $30 million worth of match and about 50 organizations mm -hmm. that are a part of that. So local soil and water conservation districts, watershed projects, uh, private organizations as well. So right. it's a great way to leverage tools. You put folks together in the same room. Sometimes they come even with slightly different priorities, but you find out mm -hmm. that you can leverage and get more done by working together and it has been an important part of that effort. Absolutely, and and I want to thank you for that because you really have been a true leader on those water quality initiatives. And I know that when Iowa came up with their nutrient um, management strategy, uh, the EPA even was very complimentary of the voluntary process and the engagement that we had throughout Iowa. So I want to compliment you on that. I know my time uh, is expired, but I, I look forward to working with both of you gentlemen. Thank you so much for your service. I appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr.